Hello guys, this is Jess from Stellar Tarot and welcome to another episode of Witchcrafting Wednesday. Today what I'm going to be making is a little project that I um, thought of for Self Love September and that was to make a um, anointing oil for yourself. And the reason why we might want to make uh, an anointing oil to kind of invoke a feeling of self-love is when we anoint something, when we think of other religions using the technique of anointing, we think of marking them as sacred with some divinely blessed oils or waters or, you know, basically to infuse it with the divine energies and the properties of a deity. So in witchcraft, we will often use anointing oils to anoint things like candles or sacred objects like our athames or our ritual swords or wands or things like that. And when we do this, we are taking oils, whether we have made them ourselves or we've had other witches that have crafted them, and we infuse them with the properties of um, certain crystals, plants, or herbs, or oils, and we combine them together into a vessel and we bless it somehow. Maybe we use sunlight or moonlight, maybe we use words of power, maybe we use sound magic like drumming, maybe we use a combination of all of them. But in the end, we end up having a product that is, to us anyways, sacred. And that is exactly what we're going to do today. Now for the most part, I'm going to be using oils, which I have in this case here. Um, in other ways, I'm also going to be using some crystals, and I'm going to be using a little bit of plants. And that's because I like my, um, my anointing oils to have a little bit of some of the essences that are in them in order to kind of bring it together um, and kind of make it look cohesive and things like that as well. So I have purchased from a local metaphysical shop an empty uh, cobalt blue um, essential oil bottle. You can see the little dropper top is in here. And this is the kind that once you screw it on, you screw it all the way down until this lip part fall, um, comes underneath. And then um, when you go to uh, open it again, it will break the seal on the lid. Um, this wasn't very expensive. This was, I think, 2 or $3. Uh, they're much cheaper if you can order them in bulk. So if you do this a lot for yourself, if you make a lot of oils, I would suggest going to like eBay or Amazon or supplying companies online and ordering them in larger quantities. Uh, but if you're just looking for singles, metaphysical shops will often be your place to go. Sometimes so will um, health food stores, but of course it depends on what's near you. So take a look, see if you can support anyone local instead of buying um, big business if possible. But, uh, you know, if you can't, don't be afraid to go big. So what I like to do is I always like to start off with crystals. I have this um, container here. I went to Michael's oh, a few years ago now, and I purchased this gigantic thing of um, semi-precious stone beads. And basically what it is, is it's a bunch of um, semi-precious stones that they drilled holes through. And a lot of them, like this one, they started to drill, but it never went entirely through. Some of them it did. Um, this is a piece of crackle quartz. Um, I don't think this one was successful either. No, it wasn't. But others, like this unikite, does have um, a hole through it. And it's relatively inexpensive to buy um, a container like this. It didn't cost me a lot of money, and you get a lot of bang for your buck, especially if you are able to um, identify crystals well, if you have a good um, crystal identification book. This is a really great way to get your hands on a whole bunch of semi-precious stones for not very much money. You'll also get a lot of little tiny chip stones in there like that as well. And this appears to be like a black cat's eye or something like that. It's got a nice shift to it. Um, but I selected two pieces. Uh, this one, I believe, is moonstone or a very light version of labradorite. It has the right type of shift to it. This one, very hard to tell with the color, but it is um, a piece of rose quartz. And both of them will fit into the mouth of my bottle. But if they don't, let's say you have a larger crystal like this, and you would like to put it inside your um, oil, 
It's a very simple process. You can take a piece of cloth. I suggest getting a piece of um, scrap fabric, like a heavier one from the remnant section at a fabric store, and wrap your crystal up in it, and then go outside and put it on a hard surface like cement, or like if you have cement floor in your home, that works too and take your hammer to it and smash it a few times and that will give you the chip stones that you need to fit into bottles like this especially if the holes have not been drilled all the way through and the crystal really isn't good for anything else uh, you can um, basically pulverize it into bits so that you can use it in your magical workings especially in things like this um, just obviously be careful when you unwrap it uh, the the shards can still be quite sharp and you're going to want to possibly handle your crystals with gloves or um, to uh, you know have some kind of safety net of some kind uh, safety protocol I guess in place so anyways that is what all these beads have been saved for they're, they're really not that great in my opinion for using for beading projects uh, they're uh, interesting shapes and things like that. So these are the ones that I've saved for literally uh, pulverizing and putting into my uh, magical infusions. So put that aside. I've selected mine already and they are the first things that I drop into my bottle. I don't know why but I always like to start with the crystals. And then I am going to add a little bit of some of the herbs that I want to have um, in uh, as oils as well. So I want a little bit of lavender, and these are nice lavender buds. And I also want bergamot. And because this comes in stick form, it's, oops, it can be quite easy to pop into your bottle. Three or four of these should be plenty. Um, and the reason I like to do this is because I do like my, uh, my herbal concoctions, my oil concoctions, to have a little bit about uh, of what they is actually going to be in it, inside it. It, it will, like if someone were to dump it out, they would be able to possibly pick it out to see what it was. Then we're going to add some essential oils into our bottle. This is my um, collection of essential oils in here. Um, I'm not like a crazy essential oil type of person. Um, I don't tend to have tons. This is probably the most I've ever had at one time ever. A lot of mine are these cheaper ones that I get from uh, local drugstores and things like that because I am, uh, like I said, I'm not a crazy essential oil person. I do have a few doTERRAs in here, um, but a lot of them were given to me by my aunt, including this doTERRA box, actually. My aunt is a doTERRA nut. She's buying from them constantly. She makes a lot of her own... Uh, blends and things like that and so she um, uh, outgrew I guess you could say her box she has this box here and she didn't have um, a use for it anymore she upgraded to a bigger one and so she gave this to me because she knew that I did not have one so I thought that was really nice of her um, I'm just selecting out some oils here that I want to put in and of course a lot of them don't have the labels on top so I have to actually pull them up to look at them I think I've got the three that I want though oh I'm going to add a couple of drops of vetiver too because that one's like really good for depression and things like that but yeah um, I tend not to go more than like say three or four cents at a time and um, because I've got uh, lavender and bergamot in it, those are the ones that I want to be the most prevalent. So I put a few drops of each one that I want in there. So bergamot went in first. Lavender is going to get more. 
because I freaking love lavender. Oh my God. I can't get enough lavender ever. <laughs> I'm going to put one drop of lemon in oh, or two because it came out fast. Um, because lemon really complements the, the citrusy notes in uh, bergamot. And then vetiver is supposed to help with things like depression and stuff. And it's also a very thick oil. So it takes a while for the oil to come into the dropper. You can kind of see it starting to come out now. I like to try to tap to help it along. There's one. Come on. There we go, and two. And that is thick, 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 thick. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell from looking at it, but it is like syrup in there. It's very thick. All right, I have added all of the scents that I am going to add. And now, this is what I like to top it up with. I use jojoba oil, and the reason is, is because if I'm going to be anointing myself, that means it's going to be touching my skin. And I want the oil to be as nourishing as possible for my skin. And jojoba oil is a, or jojoba seed I think it comes from, is a plant-based oil. But it is the one that is available on the market right now that is the most similar to our skin's own natural oils. I don't think I've ever heard of anyone um, reacting to it or having uh, like skin breakouts or allergies from it. And because I am the type of person who tends to have um, skin reaction allergies and things like that to a lot of the modern chemicals that we put into um, personal care products, I wanted to go with something that would be really gentle and nourishing for my skin. And that is exactly what jojoba oil is. Um, of course, too, if you're watching this and you're wondering if you have to use like an oil dropper bottle, you don't. You could also use a roll-on. You can buy empty roll-on bottles as well. Um, I've even found at places like Winners and, and TJ Maxx and stuff, you can get like packages where you get multiple empty roll-ons and uh, you can uh, fill those with uh, your essential oils and then fill it up with the carrier oil as well. For me, for myself, I really like uh, the jojoba oil as my carrier, but you can totally customize it as well. You can absolutely change it up. Uh, some people like um, sesame seed oil. Other people will like uh, coconut, like um, the liquid type of coconut oil. Uh, some people prefer a grape seed or um, is it safflower seed or something like that. There's a lot of different carrier oils that are great to use, um, you know, that are safe to come into contact with your skin. Jojoba oil happens to be my personal favorite. And like I said, with my particular problems too that I have with my skin, I figured it was the safest bet. All right, I think I filled it up as safely as I can. Yeah, I'm almost at the neck of the bottle there. So I'm going to drop my dropper in with my lid and I'm going to keep turning. Okay, it slid down to the bottom there and I heard that nice click. Yeah. There we go, it's separating from the ring. Which I can now slip off if I want to. I will leave it there though. And there is my dropper into place. I'm gonna give the, I'll pop the lid back on just so nothing comes out. You can roll your oil together Tip it upside down. You can see that it's uh, everything is kind of dancing around in there. And give it a sniff. Mm. 
Mm, yes, that's lovely. It does have mostly a um, lavender scent to it, but there are the hints of the bergamot and a little bit of lemon in there as well. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to charge this. So you infuse, um, to charge uh, your oil Hi. is to infuse it with your magical intent and uh, your magical purpose and energy. So for me, one of the first steps is going to be popping this um, on the windowsill tonight and having it spend a couple of nights under the light of the new moon. And uh, to me, that's really important because the new moon really has a... Um, a special meaning for me and or so I guess technically it's the dark moon pardon me the dark moon has special meaning for me you want to hold it up for them it's down here you got to do it down there here you go so this the the dark moon has special meaning for me who my matron goddess is and things like that so I am uh, going to pop that onto uh, the windowsill for a couple of nights and when it's finished charging uh, from the windowsill then I am going to um, to my little uh, consecration ceremony with it where I'm going to, um, at my altar, spend a bit of time holding it and infusing I mean, it with, uh, no, you don't go in there, uh, infusing it with my intentions and my energy and my purpose, which is to assist me in my journey with self-love, uh, to remind myself on the everyday that I am sacred and that I am divine and I am worthy of divine love and, and attention and things like and that. And I found this crystal album. Yeah, right there. See, you could show it to them right there. There you go. So that is how you make your own uh, magical anointing oil. I hope that you guys found this video informative and um, I hope it's inspired you to make your own. And if it has, I would love to know what types of herbs and oils and crystals you chose and um, how you enjoyed the process. So thank you very much for being Bye. here with me today, guys. Have a wonderful uh, week and Bye. an amazing self-love September. Bye. Bye.